Good evening and welcome to Foodlink, nourishing lives during the pandemic, presented by Wegmans. I'm Adam Chodak with my co-anchor Maureen McGuire. We are pleased to bring you the story of Foodlink and their response to the COVID crisis. We'd also like to recognize the presenting sponsor of this program, Wegmans, for their generous support. Now I'd like to introduce Julia Tedesco, Foodlink President and CEO. Julia, could you tell us a little bit about Foodlink and how you and everyone in your organization continue to positively impact this community? Thank you, Maureen. Foodlink is a nonprofit with a mission of leveraging the power of food to end hunger and build healthier communities. Our food bank, community kitchen, and all of our community partners have risen to the challenge to address a rise in food insecurity due to the pandemic. A spike in unemployment left thousands of additional people seeking food assistance for the first time. School closures left tens of thousands of children without reliable access to healthy meals. Most importantly, the pandemic exposed the injustices of poverty and how so many of our neighbors were just one crisis away from struggling to put food on the table. We have spent the last 10 plus months working with our partners to nourish countless lives. And with your support, we expect our elevated response to continue for the months and years ahead. Let's take a look. In quote unquote normal times, Foodlink has two main priorities. The first is to make sure that the emergency food needs of our region are met, that people have the access to food that they need on any given day. The second priority is to really look at the root causes of hunger and address those in a really proactive way through a lot of innovative programming. What COVID has forced us to do is to really focus mainly on that first priority, to put our resources back towards meeting the emergency needs of our entire community. COVID was a, a profound dislocation of food sources, not just the financing and the ability to buy it, but also the, the, the location to get it, the ability to get there, transportation, everything was strained immediately. So throughout our planning process in February and then certainly into March, it became very clear that our number one priority would be to make sure that children were fed. We knew that if the public health crisis was here locally, a lot of children would be out of school, specifically children in the city of Rochester who receive breakfast and lunch in a school setting and oftentimes a third meal every single day. And that burden for families in the city of Rochester of serving that many additional meals to their family and having to support that financially, we knew would be a different type of crisis for our area. So that became our number one goal, is to fill that gap, to make sure that we were able to get meals to kids and families in need. When the COVID hit, figuring out how we're gonna get these meals to the kids, not only the ones that were allowed in the building, but also the ones that weren't in the building, it was very challenging. We know for a fact, and there's lots of data and research to back this up, that if a kid does not have significant food to eat and healthy food to eat, that it is damaging uh, to their ability to grow and their ability to learn. March 2020 was the first time we'd ever held a community-wide drive-through distribution. And since that date, we've done over 500 across our region. And they've been really instrumental as a mechanism to get people food as safely as possible. One thing that I think has made them really successful is that we've collaborated with a lot of our emergency food partners throughout the counties that we serve, including food pantries and other meal programs that know the community and can help set up the volunteers and infrastructure needed to hold these. When you watch the evening news and you see communities with thousands of cars lined up at five in the morning to get food. And that doesn't happen in this community. And it's because Foodlink is so dispersed throughout the community that people don't have to line up by the thousands. Foodlink is in each block, in each community, and throughout the region. I think one of the silver linings of this entire year has been seeing just how much coordination and collaboration and partnerships came together to make our regional-wide response possible. The crisis required that we collectively focus on what matters most, and that's exactly what we did. As part of uh, Action for a Better Community, we rely 
uh, on other partners in the community. But I think our, one of our strongest partnerships has been with Foodlink throughout this pandemic from the beginning. We're going to try and extend in partnership with Foodlink a whole lot better delivery of food to needs than we were doing before the virus. While I know there's still so much work ahead of us, I'm still really proud of how this community has responded to date and how the team here at Foodlink has responded. And I'm proud to be part of the nonprofit sector. I think a lot of people think of nonprofits as small, simple charities. But what this crisis has shown is that our nation and certainly our region really relies on nonprofits to hold things together. And we've seen them come up with a lot of complex and innovative solutions, all with one common theme to care for the common good, to make sure people's basic needs are met. And in Foodlink's case, to make sure that every single person in our region is fed on any given day. And I'm proud of how we responded, and I know that we'll be ready to take on whatever lies ahead. The work Foodlink does really does make a difference. You can help make a difference by calling 585-471-7350 or going to foodlinkny.org slash nourishing lives or text Foodlink to 50155. And if you donate during this 30-minute broadcast, the impact of your gift will be doubled. That's right. Foodlink's board of directors, with a lead gift by Tom and Annie Kane, have generously offered to match all donations up to $25,000. We also want to thank the following sponsors for their generous support. Hi, I'm Patrick Horsey with Wegmans Food Markets, and I'm also a member of the Foodlink board for the past nine years. Tom Farrell started Foodlink over 40 years ago, and his vision wasn't that much unlike Robert Wegmans, taking care of his people, making a difference in the communities that we serve. In 2020, we helped in many ways with the new challenges during the pandemic. Our culinary employees came over to Foodlink for months to help cook and feed the many needs that we have. Our truck drivers and transportation team helped move thousands of pallets from one location to another as space was donated for our volunteers to sort food and pack boxes. We all came together to make sure people were fed. We believe communities thrive when we all work together. There's so much need in Foodlink's 10 county service area. We encourage you to support Foodlink today. Hi, I'm Fahim Massoud, President and CEO of ESL Federal Credit Union. As a proud and committed supporter of Foodlink, we extend a sincere thank you to the organization's staff and volunteers who have done a phenomenal job serving so many throughout Greater Rochester in the past year. Access to nutritious food should be a human right, and Foodlink plays a crucial role in providing that access to thousands of our friends, families, and neighbors. Thank you, Foodlink, for all you do to help so many. The people of Entree Computer Services are honored to help sponsor Foodlink's Nourishing Lives during the pandemic response. They are inspired by their efforts to help those in need. Entree people provide wide-ranging technology services, including IT managed services, remote managed services, application development, consulting, security, recruiting, and internal communication using our award-winning eStreams product. Interested in learning more? Go to our website at EntreeCS.com or call us at 585-760-1010. I'm here with Julia Tedesco, Foodlink President and CEO. Julia, what are we going to see next? Adam, I'd like to share some stories from the people who directly benefit from the various programs we provide at Foodlink. It's just a scary time. I mean, there's so many things we could go on and on about it. You know, people staying healthy and safe is one big issue. Um, the impact of the job loss, businesses closing. I'm, I'm very grateful you know, that there's programs around like this for people who are in need. My husband was working, so we were making do. Um, although I have my son and his girlfriend living with me now, like I see in the paper that it's been quite common. Um, so it's, I have to put a little more food on the table and I take care of my elderly mother. So we make extra for dinner and I bring food for her. And he had a massive heart attack um, in November. So I have been, it's been hard. It's been really hard, so this is quite helpful. Everything's helpful. 
everything that they give out, we mostly just eat it because it's, you know, it's healthy. The vegetables are good, fine, and the meat and the milk. And if it's too much milk, we give to my grandkids, but it's fine, you know, um, you know everything's good. The service that Food Link here is providing is one that this area is so lucky to have because there's plenty of other areas where it's miles and miles and miles long. We have multiple distribution sites here and the way that it's being run is just absolutely, absolutely beautiful. It's yeah. wonderful and it's healthy, the abundance of fresh produce. If we were to go to the store and buy this, we, we wouldn't be able to afford it. When you get, go to the grocery store, these items is a, is a big ticket price at the um, grocery store. So it helps us to be able to get other, some of the other things that we need. Greatly. There's a lot of people not working. And this is so helpful. COVID is, well, we know it's worse now than ever, and there's more and more people with it, and I can't even imagine what the next six months are going to be like. And we hope to be able to reciprocate to get back one day, too. When everything is lighter at the end of the tunnel, we want to be able to donate to this organization more than more than we were able to, to receive from. You know, it's, it's that, that type of feeling that we have. We want to remind anyone seeking food assistance, you can call 211 or visit Food Link's website at foodlinkny.org slash findfood. And for those who want to help support Food Link, please call 585-471-7350 or go to foodlinkny.org slash nourishing lives or text foodlink to 50155. Let's take a look at how your donations could impact the community. It's the most basic of all needs, and since the pandemic, the ability for many families to put food on the table has been at risk. Good health starts with good food. That's why Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield partners with Foodlink to support their food access programs to improve the health and quality of life for those in our community. Please join Excellus Blue Cross Blue Shield and share in Foodlink's mission to help feed our neighbors and build a healthier community. Hi, I'm Peter Messner from Messner Flooring. Installing a new floor in your home is a joyous event. Especially in the kitchen, the heart of the home. But too many local families face hunger every day. As a third generation local business, Messner Flooring is proud to support Foodlink as they leverage the power of food to end hunger and build healthier communities. Thank you for joining us in supporting Foodlink. Foodlink's mission is to leverage the power of food to end hunger and build healthier communities. Since the pandemic began, there has been a 45% increase in the number of people in our region who need food assistance, and 40% of people now using Foodlink services are relying on the emergency food system for the first time. Heart of Seacrest and Emory is a proud supporter of Foodlink and the work it continues to do for our community. My name is Peter Fox, and I'm the president of Debella Subs. During the pandemic, our goal has been to help those who most need support to get through these challenging times. With the help of our guests, we raised $365,000 for food banks. This translates to 1 million meals for those who are food insecure. $100,000 went directly to Foodlink to help in hunger in Rochester. Everyone who donates today will receive a coupon for a free cookie at Debella's. At Debella's, we are committed to supporting our community and proud to partner with Foodlink. So, Julia, anyone who's been inside the facility Foodlink operates on Mount Reed Boulevard knows just how impressive it is. It's a big facility, and Adam, I was so grateful to have the opportunity to show you our operations firsthand and to provide a behind-the-scenes look inside the Foodlink Community Kitchen and Distribution Center. And I want to thank you for that tour. How about we share it with our viewers? Hi everyone, we are here at the Food Link facility at Mount Reed Boulevard, an impressive facility, so impressive that people want tours of this. Joining me right now to help us out with this, Julia Tedesco, President and CEO of Food Link. Because of the pandemic, not many tours going on right now. 
That's right. But people do want a look inside, and this is one of the hot spots right here, the kitchen. What goes on here? This is our Foodlink community kitchen. We built this new facility about five years ago now, but we've been running a kitchen for 17 years. A lot of people don't know that in addition to food banking, we do healthy meal production. In this kitchen, every single day, we prepare somewhere between 4,000 and 6,000 healthy meals for children throughout the city of Rochester. And those meals go directly to sites all across the city, from YMCA's to after school centers to libraries to RCSD sites. Unbelievable. And the thing is, too, what people don't often understand is how creative they are in there. It's not just about the quantity, but the quality. The real genesis of this kitchen was to raise the bar on institutional food service. Our goal was to provide the highest quality, most nutritious meals to the children who need it the most. Everything in this kitchen is made from scratch. We have an executive chef, Casey Hollenbeck, who leads the team of really talented cooks in there, in addition to our Foodland Career Fellows, who are going through um, a workforce development program, learning how to be chefs, and really their end goal is to provide the best meals possible to kids. And here's another fun aspect about the kitchen. It has something to do with apples. Yeah, so in addition to producing thousands of meals every single day, we have a social enterprise business that we run out of this kitchen, which is a value-added sliced apple line, where we are taking New York State-grown apples, most of them coming from Wayne County, slicing them, putting them into single-serving bags, and they're going out to hundreds of school districts across the state to make sure that, again, kids are getting access to New York State-grown healthy produce, really improving their diet. All right, so we just talked about what's happening here at the facility. Now we're going to talk about what's shipped from from the facility. We're going to head there now. All right, so here we are, and I guess why don't we start with this? Where are we? We are in the Foodlink Distribution Center right here on Mount Reed Boulevard. It's a 100,000 square foot warehouse from which we distribute about 20 million pounds every single year to the surrounding 10 counties. Incredible. And it reinforces the point that not only do you serve food, but you work as a food bank to serve food pantries. That's correct. There's a real uh, difference between a food bank and a food pantry, and the difference is really the scale at which we operate. So we are part of the Feeding America network of food banks. It's a nationwide network. Anywhere you go in the country, any county or zip code, it is served by one of the 200 food banks. And then we, in turn, have a network of about 500 nonprofit agencies that are members of Foodlink. These are soup kitchens, food pantries, other community centers or meal programs that source their food from Foodlink, and we distribute that to them. The logistics here, I mean... It's a, it's a big operation. We have about 100 staff members now. We have a fleet of 15 or more vehicles that are distributing across 7,000 square miles. Um, and it really, it operates like any for-profit distribution center. It's just that we have a different mission, and that is to feed those in need. Wonderful. And a lot of this does not work without volunteers, and we're going to be talking about them next. Before we get to the volunteers, we want to stop here. This is produce, and I think that that's an important point to make, is that it's not just cans or boxes that you guys are sending out. That's right. People, when they think of food banking, tend to think of that dented can. But we really, we distribute, as I mentioned, over 20 million pounds of food. And last year, a quarter of that food was fresh produce. We get product from the USDA, from the federal government. We get it from a retailers like Wegmans, who donates over 6 million pounds every single year. We get it from manufacturers who do donate really good cases product and we also purchase a lot of food to complement all that we get donated and that's where a lot of public support dollars go and we invest in fresh produce we know that it's our responsibility if we're feeding people to make sure that they have healthy components to every single meal and so we've invested a lot in local farms New York State farms and in produce from across the country to make sure that people have that healthy food yeah helps farms and helps the people who eat the food that's I love right. it all right next we're gonna talk about getting the food outside of the building we're going curbside. So we have stepped outside to see what Foodlink does outside this facility and you got a fleet here. We've got a fleet. These are our curbside market vehicles. They operate as farmers markets on wheels and we are at in pre-COVID times, we're at about 100 different stops in five counties every single week. Our goal is to get to areas that have low access to healthy, affordable, nutritious food. So we go to Rochester Housing Authority sites, areas where there's a density of people, low-income folks who, again, don't have access to retail um, grocery stores. It's a really exciting program, and it 
it also creates a lot of synergy with some of our other programming. So some of the produce that we sell in here comes directly from our urban farm on Lexington Ave. And we oftentimes pair up this uh, vehicle and some of our stops with our nutrition education uh, courses so that people not only get access to fresh fruits and vegetables, they learn how to use those and how to prepare meals with them. And people can see you out in the community. That's so. right. Very good. Julia, this is tremendous. I promised you we were going to see the folks who give of their time to make all of this work. We're going to hit that up right now. So Julia talked about the 100 plus employees here but you have a lot of other folks who actually work here, in a sense. Absolutely, we would not be able to do the work that we do every single year without the volunteers that come in. So we are standing in the main room where our volunteers operate. They help to sort donated food, inspect it, make sure that it's safe for human consumption, and that um, we categorize it properly to get out to the agencies that we serve. And you know what this says to me? This says that as we try to come out of the pandemic, to me, this is where we can start to rebuild community. Absolutely, we've seen a lot of people, we've had to limit the number of volunteers coming in and we've had a lot of people begging us to come back because they miss that sense of community. They miss the opportunity to give back. And so it really is a two way street, but we couldn't be more grateful for all that they, they lend um, to our mission and making it possible. Yeah, and they know the need that's out there. Absolutely. So Julia Tedasco, president and CEO of Foodlink, giving me a tour so I can kind of in a way give you a tour and hopefully in the coming months Months, you can come in and see it for yourself. Thanks so much. Thank you, Adam. Adding to that, I want to thank all of our volunteers for their hard work and dedication to Foodlink's mission. And I'd like to remind people they can support Foodlink by calling 585-471-7350 or by going to foodlinkny.org slash nourishing lives or they can text Foodlink to 50155. Now we want to recognize the generosity of these supporting sponsors. Hi, I'm Matt Squires, CEO of Manning Squires Henning, a local general contractor. We proudly support Foodlink, and I encourage you to do the same to help in their mission to end hunger and build a healthier community. United Way is a proud, long-standing partner with Foodlink as our regional food bank. And with the impact of COVID ravaging through our communities, Foodlink stepped up in big and bold ways. We are grateful for Foodlink. We will continue to stand with Foodlink. And we are so, so very fortunate in our community for their leadership, entrepreneurship, and their commitment that everyone has the basic human right to access to healthy and nutritious food. I'm Megan Avila with Pioneer Millworks and New Energy Works. We're dedicated to crafting beautiful shelters that are healthy for people and planet. Healthy people need healthy food. We know many families struggle to put dinner on the table, so we're partnering with Foodlink to ensure our community has access to good food. For the health coverage you need close to home, lean on Molina Healthcare. Molina has 40 years of experience caring for people across the U.S. with access to quality care for moms, kids, and families. And Molina covers preventive services, office visits, prescription drugs, pediatric care, maternity and newborn care, and more. For details and to find out if you qualify, go to leanonmolina.com or call 877-751-0840. Get the care you need. Lean on Molina. Ward Greenberg is pleased to support Foodlink in its critical mission to end food insecurity and build healthier communities. As a Foodlink board member, I have had the honor to see firsthand the tireless work and dedication of Foodlink staff and volunteers as they work together to transform lives, advocate for equity, and create healthy futures for the people of Greater Rochester and the Finger Lakes region. Please join us in supporting Foodlink, whose work is now more vital than ever. Foodlink has launched a new Find Food map for upcoming food distributions, the curbside market schedule, and a listing of 150 plus food pantries and community meal programs. Go to foodlinkny.org slash findfood. Here's more information on how programs like the curbside market have adapted to the challenges of this past year and continue to serve our neighbors. Nutrition Education's mission is to empower 
folks of all ages with the skills and knowledge that they need to live the healthiest lives possible. We've identified those that just do not have the transportation to get to fresh, healthy, affordable food. So the Curbside Market's mission is to meet those individuals where they are. Oh, the Curbside Market stands out because it's a mobile market. We had about 40,000 customer visits last year. So when it paused, that was a little tough for us. All of our in-person programming had to stop, all of our food demonstrations had to stop, and really all of our work grinded to a halt pretty quickly. We needed to take a step back and figure out how we were gonna serve our customers in a safe way. Our team was redistributed to other departments. Our focus just turned to supporting FoodLink's emergency response efforts. We shifted our resources over to helping out with our emergency food box distributions and our, our meal distributions. We had staff members out helping with volunteers at the distribution center. It was stressful, but it was really good work. We realized that customers still requested the curbside market. We decided that we were going to come up with a safety plan. We reached out to the community and we asked the community, what would you like to see besides the product that we're going to have on the truck? We also wanted to know, how would you like to see us operate? So when the market started back up, I was very excited because I started with this program um, back in 2013 and to see us to be able to get back out there and serve, we could see how people were very appreciative of us being out there. Customers were able to come back, shop, use their Double Up Food Bucks. We were able to enroll some new individuals in our Double Up Food Bucks program. Our customer base has been very, very strong and supportive, and we truly appreciate them, you know, supporting us. It's easy, it's convenient. You've got a lot of people that are in wheelchairs, using walkers. It's good for our community that we have this. The new program that we started is called Cooking with Food Link, and it's a fully virtual cooking class where we deliver pre-packed bags of groceries to participants' doors, and then the folks log on to a Zoom and cook along with us and end up with a full meal at the end of class. We tend to get stuck in patterns with, with the foods that we like, and so a lot of folks just aren't familiar with certain fruits or vegetables. Our job is to get them to have positive contacts with new foods. All of our programs are geared towards low-income individuals, but we don't do any income screening. The purpose is to share information that can make healthy eating accessible on a limited budget. Our recipes are all very low cost, using accessible, affordable ingredients. We've heard a lot of great feedback from these classes. The number one thing that we've heard is just, it's been so great to have something fun they can do as a family. Having people in their own kitchens is really unique. It's a very realistic environment. People are using their own utensils. Their kids are in the background. They just got off of work. It's exactly how making dinner on a Tuesday actually happens. It teaches you how to eat a little healthier and learn new recipes. Before, I didn't know a lot of recipes. It's really inspiring to me. It's something for me to do and I like to cook. I think FoodLink is really known for being an organization that uses food to creatively solve problems. And I think there's examples of that all across FoodLink. Thank you, Julia, for sharing FoodLink Nourishing Lives with us. And a special thank you to our presenting sponsor, Wegmans. Remember, you can still add your support by calling 585-471-7350 or going to foodlinkny.org slash nourishing lives or text foodlink to 50155. Good night and thank you, everyone. Hi, I'm Patrick Morsi with Wegmans Food Market, and I'm also a member of the Food Link Board for the past nine years. I had the opportunity early in my career to spend time with Robert Wegman, and he taught me many lessons, but probably two of the most important lessons, always take care of others and make a difference in the communities that we serve. It's one of our values. At Wegmans, we can't think of a better way to make a difference than partnering with Food Link to end hunger, and to create a healthier community in our 10 county region. 
We believe that the fight against hunger and the fight against poverty are one and the same. We work together to build the Food Link Community Kitchen with the support of many other partners in our community. Our goal was not only to supply healthy meals to local agencies around our area, but to start a career fellowship program. We believe communities thrive when we all work together. We encourage you to support Food Link today. At the Quitella Center for Plastic Surgery, we believe in nurturing beauty inside and out. And proper nourishment is key. Food insecurity rates in our region were expected to rise due to the pandemic, representing an additional 22,000 children in households with limited or uncertain access to food. This is why we proudly support Food Link and the Community Kitchen, which has served over 750,000 meals to children since schools closed in March 2020. As a community, can help change the lives of families in our area. Every donation you make helps nourish more children in our area.